So nice to see everybody. Go ahead, cross your shins. Have a seat. Flex the feet, press the hands into the thighs, lift your spine, drop the shoulders. Keep your chin lifted and let your eyes close. There is a lot of talk from my teachers about having discipline for being here. Whether that's discipline in being on your yoga mat or showing up to teach a class, or discipline in other forms of your life. And it strikes me that this idea of discipline is not encouraged because, well, at least my teachers did not encourage that in me, not because I was wrong or failing at something. But there is a certain amount of discipline needed to get anything that you're looking for. Whether it is discipline to get through the workday, to not, you know, to, to bite your tongue when someone says things that you don't think are right. But in my early days, I always thought discipline was being taught to me because I was felt that it was a negative that I needed to be encouraged about. I recognized that was wrong. So tonight, let our practice, my friends, be not one of discipline of correction, but one of discipline of joy and celebration. It takes discipline to constantly be unhappy, <laughs> to always look for the negative, to always say, what about, to always, to always worry about those things that aren't in our control. That takes discipline. So what is the discipline of our joy? Can our yoga mat be a practice of discipline of being joyful or happy or the discipline in being confident, or the discipline of being curious. Because I recognize in my life where the disciplines are the things that I was really eager to do, I was encouraged not to do because others, others didn't like that discipline. I knew lots of people that didn't like me being very encouraged or disciplined to ask questions. I'm sure everyone else has a story that the thing that they were really keen to do, they were on fire to do, they had the discipline for doing it. It was encouraged not to. So let our practice, my friends, be one of being on the mat, a practice of discipline, not just of flexible hamstrings and supple spines. Those will be byproducts of our discipline but joy in our discipline. A discipline, a practice of finding some happiness, finding some stability, or whatever thing it is that you need, right? The yoga mat is the place to practice that. It might come through the hamstrings, it might come from a stiff spine, but when that spine is stiff and the hamstrings are tight, we can either be disciplined in practicing, practicing our negative thoughts and feelings about ourselves, or as a friend of mine would say, I have an abundance of room for growth. That is a discipline of joy. Bring your palms together with the chest, thumbs touching the sternum. Still flexed feet, strong legs. We'll om shortly three times and begin. Oh. 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 
Bow your head. And salute the essence of yoga inside yourself. That your life is never stuck, static, or stale. Bring the hands into the lap. Let the head rise and the eyes open. All right. So no one's stuck off. Very good. All right. So still seated on your mat. You can, if you're having like some tight hips or groin or low back pain, you can elevate your hips by sitting on blocks, blankets, couch cushions, or whatever. But take your legs wide into seated straddle stretch. We'll start at the bottom. Stretch those legs out. So when you stretch the legs wide, as we've done many times before in this class, online and back in person in yoga. When you stretch your legs out, <clears throat> take a minute to kind of feel where your hips are in the pose. Do you tilt backwards? Do you kind of tend to want to slouch forward? Just take your fingertips behind you and go for a lift upright. And then feel what's going on in your body in the pose. Not just at the start of class in the quiet meditative moment, but in each time you get into a pose, even if it's for a brief second, check in, feel your feet, flex the foot, especially in the first pose. This might be your first pose of the whole day. For some of you, it might be the first pose of your whole week. Wow. But when you flex your feet here, feel the stretch of the calf, the leg, and use each side of your body, especially in these symmetrical poses, to check in with yourself. Does your right foot flex harder than your left foot? Does one hand push harder into the floor than the other? And can you experiment for just a moment working both more equally? Just like we worked on Tuesday or in the past classes about depressing the calf into the floor with some, or into the block with some level of uh, equal power, can you do so here? Push your heels down, push your hips down, push your fingers down, and then what lifts opposite of that? Because I've always said the secret of the yoga poses is one part goes one way and another part goes the opposite. In the middle is the space. So while we're working to push the heels down, push the hips down, push your fingers down, what is the opposite part that moves or activates to make that space? So when you push your heels down, what goes opposite? So if your heels go down, what lifts? It's gonna be your thighs, FYI. <laughs> your quads have to, have to flex and they pull towards your hip. As your heel goes down, Thighs go that way. Push your hips down. What lifts? The abdominal wall. Push your fingers down. What lifts? The upper back and chest. So always, it's, it's good to check in with your poses to make sure that you're creating some level of space somewhere and that you are active in that space. Just as at the start, the little meditative moment, we're being active in our discipline of something positive, joy, happy, whatever. You have to be aware of that in your pose too. You can do all of the hard work of the pose, but then you cannot practice all the beneficial parts of the pose too, right? Putting force into your poses doesn't necessarily mean benefit, it just means action. But action, as Mr. Angar would say, action without thought is violence. So you're putting force into the heels, force into the hips, force into the fingers. So where's the other end of it? Where's the lift? Where's the space? and the challenge of holding that space. Holding it for a long time, FYI. And can you just start to even be aware that now you're putting force and action mentally into this work. And whether you think it's interesting or whether you think it's boring or you don't know why you're here, check in where the opposite side of your mind is going. If you're putting mental focus in the muscle set, where is the emotional side of you going? Where is the mental side of you want to run off to, right? Do you want to check out of your own self? Take your hands. If you can reach forward, grab the big toe on each foot. And hip cramp. I'm happy for you. That's good. That's nice. When you grab a hold of each toe, Push the heels down, push the hips down. Bend your elbows just a little so you feel the strength of your arms. Engage into some action 
even if it's just like the tiniest little like micro bend of a wrist or the elbow to try and get the upper body to still be in that same work. So if you bend your elbows just a little or went forward to grab your arms, what has to pull up? What's the opposite of the forward fold? The lifted chest. Push the heels down so the thighs lift. Push the hips down so your core lifts. Pull forward on the arms so you can lift your chest up. And then hold. And then instead of just focusing on the, the, the force, take yourself into that space that's opening. What's going on in there? Mr. Angar would say, when you practice, you do not practice with your eyes looking from the front of the eye, but from the back side of the eye. And he would say this because that he said that is the space where we can see more than just what's in front of us. There's a there's a release there. So instead of just focusing on that thing that is the most present, the toughness of it, the strain of it, the work of it, go to what you're getting out of it. Go to the softness of it. Or some people would say the healing of it or whatnot. Because it's in that space you're making that you're gonna find the thing that you need to do to get here. I don't like to get on the mat all the time just to do all the hard stuff. I like to get on the mat to see what the space is. That is a way to get to discipline. And a discipline that's not, I'm gonna get up and do headstands for 10 minutes every day and make my neck hurt. <laughs> Bring your body up. Bring the soles of the feet together. Let the knees go wide into Baddha Konasana. Baddha Konasana. Fingertips behind you. Pull the heels close to your body. Lift your hips up slightly with your fingertips and tuck your hips forward. Bring your hips closer to your heels. And then push your feet down, push your hips down, push your fingers down. And then when you feel yourself do that, you've got, you just do one at a time even, feel the feet push down. What has to, what has to flex and lift to do so? Your thighs, that opens your hips. The legs, in, the legs are engaged to now open the pelvis. You push your hips down, what has to lift? The core, push your fingers down, the upper torso lifts. So be aware of that space in between. That the work is not just how hard you push your legs down, but the work is also recognizing what you're creating by doing that, by these two opposite points. Mr. Iyengar would say, you live in that space. So instead of just being in the force or not paying attention to your body's reaction, be in that middle part. Because all the yoga poses are trying to teach us something about an alignment aspect of our body or train, tone, shift, or create something that is different than where we are. Stretch both arms straight up. When you push your hips down, the core lifts, right? You take your arms up, Right? What, what has to move away from the lift of the arms? The hips still have to push down, so there's more space in your middle back. Even if it's not cramping or screaming or you know, aching, that's still your body, that's still your practice. How you talk about it and describe it is what Mr. Anger, or Mr. Anger and Gabriel would actually say it more. How you learn to describe it is what is how he would say, you have to do the pose 500 times to ask one question. Interlace your fingers, turn your palms up to the ceiling. Turn your palms up, notice what happens to your shoulders. Your shoulders wanna scrunch up into your neck. Well, if your arms are ascending, pull your shoulders down away from your neck and wide. Push your hips down to lift your core to help your chest go up more. Whew. Are we aware? <laughs> Tristan's, oh yeah. I'm sure everyone else is, is aware. Look up at your hands and turn your hands so the palm is facing down. Look at the lacing of your fingers. One set of fingers will be stacked, dominant, 
in front of the others, right to left or left to right. Switch it so the opposite is true. Then turn your palms back up. And notice when you turn and lift the palms up, the shoulders want to grip, pull the shoulders down away. So you're stretching the length of the arm. The shoulder stretches away from the elbow, the wrist and palm stretch up away from the elbow. <laughs> that'll make you work harder. <laughs> that'll, that'll give you some new awareness of some space. And then regardless of the shaky, the fatigue, you don't have to stay in it, but for the last few seconds of being in it, find some joy in it. Because if you can practice being, finding your joy through this, you can do it in everything else the world set, throws at you. When I very first started yoga, I remember some of my very first level two, three classes, the people would complain the whole thing. And I just said one day, you know, we paid to be here, right? Got it. You're all paid to be here in some form. You might as well find some joy in it. <laughs> Bring the arms down. Ooh, you all right? Great. Stretch your legs out in front of you straight, Dandasana. Bend both knees. Slide your right foot under your left thigh slightly. So it comes towards the left hip. So right foot goes under left thigh towards your left hip. Uh, bend your left knee deeper. Take your right hand and grab a hold of your left foot. Pick the foot up. Draw the shin bone towards the chest using both hands as best you can. And even if, you're, if your body is tight and you can't quite get the leg up to the chest, that's okay. Just don't let it lay on your leg and be passive. So recognize the leg is lifting, so something has to move opposite of it to help support it. So instead of pulling the leg super hard to your chest and collapsing, move the leg away from you just a hair, push your hips down harder so your abdominals lift and your knee can lift away from the hip better. You'll get deeper in your hip socket. You'll get some more clarity of what's going on in there. You'll find some more space between those two points. and whatever's in there, the joy of discovery. The discipline to discover. Push your right foot into the ground so your right thigh has to flex. Push your hips down so your core lifts you, your spine lifts, and just let it stretch, work. But it's not about blocking it out. Don't block away the stretch. Just be aware of how it's happening and what's happening above and below it. Find the different space. Ready? All right, from here. Take both hands and grab a hold of your left foot. Pick the foot up in front of you, the height of your knee. The knee is very bent. Point your foot. Don't flex it. Point it as hard as you can. So there's a length in action. Because if your foot points away from your knee, your thigh and your knee pull away from your foot. So you're stretching the front side of the shin. These two points are active. That makes you flex your calf. <laughs> what? No. So stretch your foot away from your knee, stretch your knee away from your foot, and now push your foot against your hand and lift your foot up any degree. And now that the leg may not be perfectly straight, but it's encouraging itself that way, stretch the left hip down into the ground. Stretch the foot away from the hip. Make the space in between the foot and hip longer, not straighter, longer. Even if it's still bent, you're still encouraging that length, but you're not forcing it. Just because the descriptor of the alignment of the pose might be a geometric shape we want to uh, encourage or be like doesn't mean it's exactly right for where you are right now. I'd rather have your knee bent, you be in the pose longer, and be ready to come back to more yoga later than 
you burn out, you drop out. <laughs> Bring the leg down. Stretch both legs out in front of you and dandasana for a moment. Both legs straight, thighs together, fingertips, get the lift. Heels down, hips down, spine up. Bend both knees. Slide your left foot under your right leg towards your right hip. Left foot under the right leg. So it touches the right hip, close as it can be. And then both, ha uh, both hands reach down, left hand grabs the foot on the right side and the right hand grabs the right knee. You start to pick up the shin towards the body. So that leg is lifting, push the hips down so that there's space between the right knee and the right hip. <laughs> your hips are pushing down, the abdominal lift. So now there's new space in between the upper back and your hips. can help you find the type of yoga practice that gets you on your mat more often is the practice you feel safe in, comfortable in, supported in. As, as Gabriel once said to me, you have to be radically present in your, in your, in your pose. That doesn't mean it has to be perfect, but it has to mean you have to get at it with some, some level of radicalness, some idea of almost zealotry to be aware of your body, to support it, to love it. Press the hips down, lift the shin, take a few breaths. Both hands grab the right foot, point the foot, pick the foot up the height of your hip or the height that your knee, the height of your knee. And before you start stretching the leg longer, stretch the foot from the knee, <laughs> stretch the knee away from the foot. So the thigh has to flex, the foot has, the shin has to flex. And then lengthen the leg, lengthen the space between those two points. So now stretch the hip away from your foot and the foot away from your hip. So it's not you pulling or torquing, but this one point, this leg working its elongation on its own power. That's how you create stability, which creates safety in your pose work. Even if it's cramping and achy and so forth. Shaky, yeah, it's shaky, she says. And breathe. We'll be here for a bit. Bend your knee, put the leg down, stretch both legs wide again, Mukta Vistkanasana. Push down through the heels, take the fingertips back behind you, press down through the fingertips, and then be aware once you've activated those points, what has had to activate and move opposite of it. So your thigh stretches away from your heel, your abdomen stretches away from your hip, your upper torso stretches away from your fingers. 
and then stretch forward and reach for the big toes again and try to keep that stretch that you've made and now your chest stretches away from your hips. Be aware of those points that you're moving from to because that's when you'll start to actually get better language for how you want to move your body, what you're looking to get and so forth. Don't worry, you're not gonna sit the whole class. We're gonna do some standing stuff here in a minute or so. Right now we're working rotational, we're working extension of the legs. That's all we've actually done. We've worked extension from folded, we've worked from seated fold, we've worked extension from lifted fold. Pasa, pasa, pasa. Push your heels down, stretch the thigh. So you stretch your heel, thigh away from your heel, heel away from your thigh. Be clear in both actions. You push your hips down so your abdomen can lift. So those two points stretch away from each other to open the groin and leave your low back. Goes right to your mid and upper back, yeah. All right. I didn't come out, just said, all right. <laughs> She's ready to get out, everybody. She says her upper back is uh, on fire. If anyone can sympathize with her. Mike, he gave you the thumbs up. He's not even in the same pose. <laughs> All right, sit on up. <laughs> Stretch your legs out in front of you and Dandasana. Bend both knees into Baddha Konasana. Feet together, knees wide. Grab the big toe of each hand, in each hand. Right hand grabs right big toe, left hand grabs left big toe. Lift, push your hips down so the abdomen lifts. Lean back ever so slightly so you feel your core and your back muscles have to flex. And then try to pick your heels up off the floor and hold. You gotta learn to float. Here's the great part about doing this at home. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna totally, I'll know, but you know, I can't stop you from leaning on your couch. <laughs> the freedom of the home practice is, the, is that your camera can be off and the teacher doesn't get to see it and call you out on it. But that's also the bad part about it. You got, you know, you're here to be seen by the teacher, right? So lean back, pick your heels up. Just don't lose any of that same power of pressing your hips down to lift your abdominals. Take your right hand and your right leg, start to point your right foot and stretch the leg out in front of you straight. Ooh. Not out to the side, right in front of you. Like that, you got it. If you fall, you fall. But remember what you did when you were fully grounded. You pushed your hips down, the abdominals lift. You were aware and kept that space. You didn't just do the force, you kept the after effect of the force. Same here, point your foot, stretch your hip away from your toes, toes away from your hip, and then maintain that space, not just the force, but the space is the important part. It gives you the freedom to shake and not burn out as quick. And then if you fall, you get back into it, right? You find some joy in the fall over, you get some laugh as a kid. Even if you can't fully tilt yourself up, you still grab the foot to where we modified it and you hold it while the other leg's on the floor. Even if you only can put your foot on a block or a chair, you, you elevate in some way. You start moving yourself in that direction. Grab a chair. If you're, if you're sitting there confused, feel free to put your foot on a chair if you have to. Huh? No. Bring your right foot back in. Don't worry, we'll do it a couple times. There you go, Lena. Good use of block. Push your hips down, pick your feet up. Lean back ever so slightly. And then be aware if you got to push your hip down, lift the core, keep that new core space. Stretch the left leg out in front of you, not by pushing from the knee, but push your hip down, push your to stretch your foot away from the hip. And then focus on keeping that space that both of those actions create. Practicing healthy habit doesn't mean force all the time. There's a point where the force doesn't do you any good. <laughs> In front of you. 
Give five, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, I don't know. I'll hold you here for a while. Bring your leg down, feet together, back to body. Even if you come fully down onto the floor, reset, push your hips down, push your feet down, find the new space. Just because you did something different doesn't mean you should run back to your old habit. You're not here for old habits. Stay in it as long as you're on the mat. Even if it's, I have to fall back to an older version of the pose so I can stay in it. That's discipline. I'm willing to stick in this because I deserve the space and the joy that comes from it. Grab your big toes, one in each hand. Lean back slightly, pick up your heels. Try to stretch out both legs in front of you. So you gotta push both hips down, feel the core. Push, push both feet against the hand, stretch your feet away from your hips, hips away from your feet. Even if your knees are bent, that's okay. Remember, it's about stretching those two points away from each other, not about straight. There you go, Micah. Breathe. All right, come on down. Tristan has a question. What's your question? Why is it not okay to hold the outside of your foot? So her question, if you couldn't hear, is why is it not okay? She asked earlier, is it okay to grab the outside of your foot? I am not a big fan of grabbing the outside of your foot because when you grab the outside of your foot, that leaves the whole inner side of your leg, your knee and ankle, to kind of collapse and rotate in. That puts all the torque and pressure on the outer foot, down the outer calf. It's much harder than to get a balanced extension one side to the other. When you grab the big toe, because the big toe for most of us is like the longest tip of the foot, at least on mine, when you point that big toe against it, it engages the inner and outer leg equally. When you grab out here, it twists your leg internally and can overwork the outer hip, put pressure on the knee. Cool. Look at her give you like stall for you. Her toe just hurt. All right. That's funny. So that's working against gravity, that lift to make that space. Come to a standing position, please. Stand nice and wide on your yoga mat, three and a half to four foot apart. Nice wide stand. Turn your toes in slightly, take both hands onto the floor, standing straddle stretch. So it's the exact same thing you were doing earlier from a standing position. So now gravity effect is different. So that means when you press into the floor, we'll change what moves. So before you start bending down, everyone keep your arms nice and straight, your chest long, stretch your hip, chest away from your hips. Push down through your feet. Feel what has to move opposite. What's the lift? What's the opposite of your feet pressing down? Your hips lifting up. So when you press your feet down, can you lift the buttock away from the leg? So the space in between is the hamstring. So you're not just encouraging the knee and you're not trying to push your whole body down, but you're learning to create flexed action in parts of your body so other parts can get that space. This is one of the hardest things to do in yoga. I've worked with a lot of students. Some have taken years to figure out their front to back, left to right, and how to flex one part and not five others. But this is very important in creating safety with your body so that you don't feel like, well, whenever I do this, that automatically makes this hurt. When I do a headstand, my back hurts. Or when I do standing forward fold, my neck hurts. You're not gripping it. So push your feet down and for as much as you push down through each foot, can you flex your hips and let your and stretch your buttock up away from your hamstring with the same power that you're putting to press down? Just don't do it with your shoulders. But notice that's how your body wants to react. Your hips are lifting so your chest wants to go down deeper. Two parts moving opposite. So 
If your feet are pressing down and your hips are lifting up, the space in between is the legs. They're long, right? You're making more space there. Take a few breaths. And before we go to the next part, try to stretch the inner and outer leg as much because you're pushing the inner and outer foot down, right? Okay. So lift the front and back side of your buttock. There's a front side to it. It's touching the pelvis bone. <laughs> and then notice it might be easier in this next moment to take your chest down a little. So bend your elbows if you want. But when you take your chest down, if your hips are going up, there is an activeness to it. Take a breath and stretch your ribs and your upper torso away from your hips. Don't just make it about your low back. Make it about your back muscle encouraging the movement. Even if you don't take your head or your chest down far, if the hips are lifting, your chest is moving away from the hip. And your hamstrings will work and you're gonna feel a ton of stuff. But then it becomes the action of, can you work them equally? So push each foot actually. Drop your right leg half an inch. There's even. And then here's the tricky part. Can you be aware of which leg you want to pay more attention to or which hip or which side of your back? I have hurt my, my back many times in my life and I have a lot of fear about my right side lower back. So I tend to pay way more attention to it than my left. And that has earned me some left side issues that I've corrected. Just because it may be the loudest part of your body doesn't mean it gets all the attention. And just because you don't want to look at it doesn't mean you shouldn't look at it. Don't be afraid of what's going on in you. Because you got this. The space you're making is so you can work with you. Love yourself, heal yourself, find some discipline in the joy of you. Take your hands, grab your big toes if you can. Same thing as seated straddle. Bend your elbows a little bit. So as you draw forward, push your thighs back. As your elbows pull up towards the ceiling, right? your feet have to press down because they're the grip point. Huh. Your ribs stretch away from your hips as your hips lift away from the feet and the ribs. Take a nice breath. That stability, like we worked on Tuesday, is this is a much more refined version of what we did Tuesday, where now you're taking stability into directional rather than just holding a leg in one position. But that's for later. Bring your body up as you exhale, please. Uh, Bring your feet together. Tadasana, please. Cross your right ankle over your left thigh. So as you cross your right ankle over your left thigh, if you're really tight in the hamstrings and you know you can't touch the floor, have a chair or blocks nearby. Press your right ankle into the left thigh and then press the left thigh into the right ankle. Your right knee starts to draw down to the floor. So if your right knee is drawing down, where's your right hip gotta go? You gotta lift a little. Trust me. Fold forward, take both hands onto the floor or onto blocks or whatever. Same action. Can you create that same stability in this pose that you got in straddle? Your left foot pushes down into the floor, right, for balance. So your left hip and your left hip glute and your hand, like your, your hip joint stretches away from that left foot. So make some space in between. As your left hip goes up, your ribs, it doesn't mean you have to curl into a ball, but stretch your ribs away from that hip. Be aware of how the hip wants to follow the, the ribs. Move the hip away from the ribs. Because when you start figuring out these movements or where you should move in yoga poses, 
go for big stuff first, like find three points that you could move away from each other and create some space and stretch. And then you get micro about it. Then you start working on individual muscles or jo uh, smaller joints. But I can tell you're all having some awareness now. Bend your left knee slightly, take your right foot to the floor. Bend your knees, stretch both arms straight out in front of you, Utkanasana, chair pose. Ah, even here, there's the same work. So even though your knees are not straight, your feet push down hard into the floor, yes? So stretch your hips away from your feet. They go back. As your hips go back, stretch your chest away from your hips. Stretch your arms away from your hips and lift. And as you lift your chest up, the plane of action changes. So as you stretch your arms, your chest up, pull your hips down, not by bending the knees, but the glutes flex and stretch for your heels. And then stand all the way up. Good job. Switch legs. Arms down, of course. Left ankle over right thigh. Once you got your left ankle over your right thigh, push down through the right foot. Already feel the glute have to fire. The right glute has to lift. Gently go forward and see how much more space you can make on the length of the leg. Work your leg first, not the straightness of your leg. I don't care about that. Push your right heel down, lift your right buttock up, stretch your right buttock away from the heel, heel away from it. Be aware of the action of those two points. Your right thigh works too. It's the big heel point. The front of the foot is to the glute, the heel is to the thigh. And then as your hip and your thigh moves, check in with your rib cage. Instead of letting it just collapse, stretch your ribs away from that hip, stretch your hips away from those ribs. Micro bend your legs. And then breathe. And instead of just focusing on the screen part, get disciplined and find what's in the space. The focus that it takes and maybe some level of joy that you're in your work, you're here on your mat, you're amongst friends, or at least People, I guess you can call them friends, of people that suffer with you. Bend your knees slightly, slide your left foot down to the floor. Bend your knees a little more, moving your hips back. Press down through the feet, stretch the hips away from that action. Stretch both arms straight out. Stretch the hips away from your arms, arms away from your hips. Tilt your chest up. So as you lift your chest and arms up, stretch your arms away from your hips. Your hips have to stretch down away from your arms, so tuck them under slightly. And then strong legs, push through. Stretch your feet away from your arms, up, arms away from your feet, stand all the way up. Make yourself the whole body the stretch point in between. Bring the arms down. Uh, come down to the hands and knees, please. Let's do a little down dog for a moment. Spread your fingers nice and wide. Try to connect as much of your palm, and the palm goes from the five joints to the, the wrist. Press as much of that space into the floor as you can. Turn your toes under, lift your hips up, Adho Mukha Sanasana. 
and get ready for a long time here. If I left you here as restorative, could you make it that? And some of you know me, I might. <laughs> we'll see. So feel where you're already forcing and pushing the body. What old habits you just, or old practice ways you just did that isn't listening to your body right now. What I mean by that is I, I would just jump, hop into down dog and stretch my heels down and push my shoulders down. I missed a shoulder injury. I torqued my shoulder. Been a lot of recovery. So back off of all the old habits for a second and go through methodically and think about are you pushing equally through each foot? Even if your heels don't touch the floor, don't worry about it. But can you put touch what is already on the floor more into the floor and then lift opposite of that? So if you press the five joints of your foot down, lift your thighs and hips away from that. Make space there. Then check in with your hands. Are you pushing through the palms and can you lift your ribs back away from the hands? Can you lift your hips from your wrists? Walk hands forward. Are you tucking your chin to try and pull your spine into something that it's not asking for? Lift your hips away from your hands, Stretch, make space. So the space between your hips and hands is your whole upper torso and your rib cage. So that is long. So let it be long. Even if it means you're not forcing as hard as you would, work more on making the space of your, between your hips and your feet long and your hips and your arms long, not hard. Because if you don't have endurance for the space you're making, you never get to keep it after class is over. If there's no room in your life to have energy for the positive thing that you're trying to create, it will dissipate the minute you're off the mat. And then yoga just becomes another Band-Aid. If that's what yoga is for you, I support that and love you for that. But there's an old story. There's a story that I heard way back. It says uh, that went like a, there was a drought in a village and a man arrived in the village with a wagon full of water and said, I'm here to help bring a container. Some brought a bucket, some brought a barrel. My teacher said, some people just want loose hamstrings. Some people want wholeness. Some people want what's in the space between their stretch. Some people just want the stretch. So take what you need, but create some discipline and joy of getting it. Make some space for it. Hips stretch away from hands. Feet stretch away from hips, hips from feet. It's, it's true both ways. Come on down to child's pose. <laughs> Big toes touching, knees wider than your hips. Hips stretch down to your heels, arms long. As you push your feet and knees down into the floor, just have some activeness to the pose. Push each foot down and each knee down and then move your hips back. Your hips move back, your arms are long. Stretch your arms nice and long and make space between your hands and your arms. And whatever resistance there is, breathe into that because that's what you're trying to change. It's not that you're not pushing hard enough. It's not that you're not trying hard enough. You're all here. It's can you allow there to be that change happens in the spaces between. Can you take the bucket or barrel of water you just got and can you drink deep from it? Take a few nice deep breaths in. We'll be here for just another moment or so.
Take a nice deep breath in. Bring your body up. Lay on your back. Stretch your legs out. Have a have a couple minutes extra savasana. My teacher would say, marinate in all the things that you just did. Your legs nice and long. No part of you has been unworked, my friends. And even if in the midst of the work, the discipline of joy was hard to find, find it now. But maybe it's that it's over, that you made it through another class. You may have learned something or heard language that's helpful to you. But breathe into the space not just into the points that were hard, the fatigue of the hip, the leg, the back, whatever, but breathe into the space that was in between. Breathe into that thing that you came here for, that you made space for, and let it become the new norm, even for just a moment. Let there be discipline in the practice of the balance of the joy, determination, whatever it is you came here for and rest for a few moments and enjoy the fruits of your yogic practice. 